but we are prepared before COVID. You understand? Yeah. It's like when you start up an idea, you have to be persistent to the point where you finally hit the opportunity. Mm -hmm. You get a lot of Nigerians don't wait until they make it. You know, we started in 2018 and every time we lose money, every time we lose money, then COVID came. It was peak for us. Interesting. So that, I think there was an idea that hits me that what if I had started apartment in, during that COVID? Imagine even if I'm making 5,000 per day for three months, that's a huge money. So that's when we had to diversify into a lot of things because during the rainy season, boats doesn't peak. The best time for boat business is September, October, November. Those are like the time that I just got back, people just come back, you understand? Those are the big period where you make money. So what we, we, we did was money, the money we made from boats, we invested into other sectors. This podcast is sponsored by Go Money. Open a new bank account from your phone in less than three minutes. All right. Welcome back to I Move Back, a new episode this week. And as you always know, we have great guests for you. Um, Shalewa is also joining us from London today. Our co host is in the building. Shalewa, what's up? How you been? I'm good. I'm good. I'm enjoying okay. London. Yeah. And obviously, Dr. POG here. You know how it goes. Uh, but yeah, we've got an amazing guest today, uh, to the, by the name of Daniel Chiazo, right? Yes. Daniel sir. Chiazo. He's Thank a you. he's a uh, founder of uh, Boat Ninja, Ninja, one of the pioneering tourism services and boat rent services in Nigeria. So, Daniel, please, if I, I could even I could even do your introduction, <laughs> but I know that you will not do it as as just as, as you would yeah. do. So. Please explain uh, your business and who you are. Okay. Um, my name is Chiazo Daniel. Uh, long before now, I was a talent manager. But I, along the line, I decided to go into the ent um, entrepreneurship um, space because there were a lot of things that were going wrong. Both and I just started as a result of we finding challenges people were going through. You know, people like Shalewa could have been scammed if... They didn't know who to book a pay to when they came to Nigeria. You understand? So we wanted to book a boat in 2018. So we realized that if you ask a captain, how much is this boat? He tells you 200,000. And when you go directly to the manager, they tell you it's maybe 100,000. Mm. So, I mean, before you kind of see the difference in the prices, how did you kind of conceptualize like the idea of kind of renting the boat? Did you try to rent your boat itself? Like, yes, yes. We, we tried to rent a boat and we were scammed well, because the price was supposed to be more like, let's say, 100 and they charged us like 150 So we realized that it wasn't supposed to be that expensive. So we started making research, started going to talk to the people. Luckily for us, we got to speak to a captain that was angry with what was happening in the business so he opened up to us the reprise of the boats so we had to from there we said why don't we because a lot of people will be scammed like these guys did to us so why don't we just come up with something so along the line both niger came up and we have been in business since 2018. Oh, interested so how i mean in terms of like the people who actually rent your boats what are what are kind of type of people that rent your boats so yeah um, I think um, when, when we started, they were telling us that we have to target the corporate market. But along the line, we realized that corporate market, maybe the companies, banks, they do most like a once in a year kind of boat cruise, end of year, corporate retreat and all. But we knew that the young people, this young people that want to have fun, create content are the biggest customers that we'll have. So we had to focus more on them. But today we... We deal with the corporate market. We deal with everybody. Mm -hmm. So just we don't really have a target market at the moment because everybody wants to go. I mean, Lagos mm -hmm. is yeah. too stressful. So you want to get away. You want to do this. You want to book a boat. 
So we are everywhere. Mm, okay. So you have a question. What you, what what's in your mind? <laughs> No, so obviously we didn't actually do proper introduction. So I met Daniel. Well, <laughs> I I actually came across his business. Um, was it end of twenty twenty? So I was yeah. there for Dirty December. It was my birthday, and um, you know, someone was like, "You should use boat Najat to get your boat." And so we got a boat from him. I had like twenty friends. It was such a good experience, and. You know, we had other options, um, but we went with you. You guys were on time. And ever since, I've been following the page. And so kudos to you for everything you've done. Thank you. Now, the 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 real gist is that both Niger is actually more popular in the UK than in Nigeria. Really? Because, Interesting. Because most people tell me that, do you know the guys? You guys are huge in London. Like, I have a lot of friends that are talking about your page. When I go to your page, I want to book a boat. You know, so that was as a result of how she got to know mm. about our business because people have already been talking. I'm like, maybe we should do a tour in, in London yeah, someday. Yeah, why not, right? Yeah. You get it, so that is it. I mean, hopefully this kind of opens you up to the kind of the international market. So, yeah. yeah. But in, like, you were talking about the story of how you founded the boat Ninja, right? Yeah. When did you come to a point where you go, okay, you know what, this is actually a good business I should stay? Because some people try different ideas and yeah. they don't, it doesn't stick, right? Some people are ah, oh, it didn't work out. But when did you come to a point that you go, you know what, this is actually not bad. And then... You know, we actually started at an event plan and more like plan parties for our mm. friends. But every time we plan a party, we, we lose money. But then we realize that people will need our services someday. You know, we had to position ourselves to be that brand where people are looking for this um opportunities they just come to us now we re we realize that lagos is this traffic of a thing you can't come from mainland to come to ireland to come and check a boat and go back and come back on the day you need a boat so we wanted to build it online either you just book mm -hmm. we wanted to take the stress out of people you understand? We we didn't make money until 2020. Like we we're just doing the 5K until 2020 when COVID hit and Lagos State banned every club. So then we were seeing guys that would come and say, I want to do a boat cruise for like five hours, 10 hours. Well, when there was the COVID. COVID, during COVID you understand? Really, yeah. So along the line, we realized that people were looking for, because they are looking for an open space. Mm. You get there are Lagos to tell you that you are not supposed to be in a closed space because that's where COVID mm. will, will will come to attack you. So boats um, boats were just an open space. They didn't know until even in Lashe, we we're going to Lashe where like people were partying every day. So Lagos they didn't know there was something called Lashe until like. Four months after, and we oh, guys wow. were already, already, already made your we money. already made our money. <laughs> we're like we, we we entered COVID. I entered COVID broke. I came out in millionaire. Wow. <laughs> I'm telling you. That's so you understand. So it was an opportunity, but we are prepared before COVID. You understand? Yeah. It's like when you start up an idea, you have to be persistent to the point where you finally hit that opportunity. Mm -hmm. You get a lot of Nigerians don't wait until they make it. You know, we started in 2018 and every time we lose money, every time we lose money, then COVID came. It was a peak for us. Interesting. And so let's get kind of do, how many boats currently do you currently, do you actually manage the boats? Or do yeah, you kind of we, get it from the owners? We, we manage a lot of boats. Well, we tried to acquire a couple of boats, okay. but then there was some crisis. But then I realized that it's better for me to be like the middleman mm. because nobody is doing it right. You mm. get because it's like you trying to be uh, Uber. Uber Uber is not aspiring to own cars. Mm. They are just trying to do it right to provide jobs and get people to places. You understand? So I think our biggest strength is that we're trying to be a logistics and a boat business. Yeah. You get if you think in that aspect, you make money. But when you try to do ownership, because running a boat business is very expensive. You get <laughs> no, because in 2021 I bought a couple of boats and I realized that the hundred k they pay me some sometimes they pay you hundred k you spend like fifty k to run that it. Mm. But then as a as a, a renter complaint, I don't I don't buy fuel, I don't handle the management cost and all. I just 
get them customers and I take my cut. Okay. So t- tell us, I mean, I'm always interested in like the stories of every day of like the customers that you face and, and <laughs> that kind of customer stories, right? Le- so Le- Lagos. For me, if I'm if I'm renting a, if I'm renting a boat, I'm just renting for fun and yeah, have a good time. Yeah. Right? And and I guess in, I'm guessing majority of your customers do the same. Yeah, you don't kind of do more like logistics or it's more like leisure and yeah, and yeah. Stuff. So you must have so many stories in that uh, the, sector. There, there are a lot of stories. Like just, just give me a know, couple. You know, no, you you know, most times, like in my line of business, a client can can delay you, but you can't delay them. It can delay you for like two hours, but if you delay them five minutes, there's a problem. They start telling you that both Niger, you imagine. So there was a time that um, during that COVID, there was this hike of price, not just price. There was no boat. Everybody wanted to go to the beach. So, you know, because then people didn't know boats was a lucrative business. So we just had a few boats. But imagine about 10 boats. You have like 200 people want to enter that 10 boat. And that <laughs> boat can only take 50. You know, people will just come and just throw money to you. Really? They just tell you, ah, boat now, I trust you. Bring your account. Okay. They just send you, say, anyhow, get me a boat. Do you understand? Yeah. So they put you in that pressure. pressure yeah. It got to a point. I had a I had this um during that period, I had I had in a day I had taken over like 20 bookings, and some boys just told me that they need a boat. And I wasn't, the, the boat I saw was a private boat. So I wanted to do a business from behind mm. with the captain. I didn't know that the captain was not settling the guys around. So the clients had already come three hours before to put their drinks. Mm. And the guy was telling me that those boats that I should wait with. And I'm like, you, got, you need to open up to me. What's, What's going on? Here? You understand? Because these guys have already you booked it, booked it yeah. and they need it for like 5 p.m. And the guy told me that the owner's brother is around. Do you understand? Okay. So, so I, I was not getting enough information. Before you know, I, I went to meet the customer. I was like, guy, how far? 5 p.m. has passed, 5.30. Before you know, the guys just started like hitting me. I'm telling you, they started hitting me, and I was like, "Bro, relax. Let me give your money." Do you know that this guy paid me six hundred k for that boat? And I, I told him, "Let me give you back your money." I just brought the money. This guy just carried it, poured it on me, and left. So you wanted to really get on the boat? He didn't you care about the he money. He didn't care yeah. about the money. You know that COVID, people were bored, so they mm. wanted. They wanted to have fun. So imagine you. So after that period, I realized that. If I'm not dealing with the owner of the boat directly, I'm not I'm not renting your boat because my business reputation is on the line. Mm. Imagine if that kind of thing happens to like 10 customers and they say boat now, you don't mind them. They don't because the the, the what makes you legit in business is the fact that you can deliver. Yeah, if yeah. you don't deliver, you are you, you are a scam. That's you scam, understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, that's why most people are actually having issues in businesses, like agents that sell properties. I, I just saw a couple of guys were telling me that there's a private jet f- for sale for $9 million. If you call those guys and tell them, okay, show me this private jet, even if you have inspection fee, they can't provide it. <laughs> you understand? Imagine 10, pe- after, yeah. Yeah. Yes, imagine 10 people call you. That's why I always tell them, don't promote what you cannot deliver mm. because your reputation is what makes you a salesperson. If yeah, yeah. Pe- 10 people call you for a, something and you don't deliver, there's a problem. So, I mean, I read on your profile that uh, kind of before you founded the Boat Ninja, you were, yeah. you were homeless before. Yeah, right? actually. And <laughs> to me, that was like, that was such an emotional, like when I read it, I was like, oh my yeah, God, like how did you kind of go through that? Can you just talk a little bit more about that? Because how did you kind of then get yourself out of that situation to... Okay, I, I, I came to Lagos because of NYC. But before then, I had already, I came to Lagos in 2012 for my IT. And everybody I called for opportunity, like, because I knew I was a writer. So I wanted that um, to get a chance. Nobody gave me a chance. So I went back. So NYC, luckily, NYC brought me to Lagos. So after my NYC, I was staying, I did my NYC in Ikorodu. So I was lucky after the NYC, my cousin I was supposed to stay with, he said, I can't, he said, I've seen you like you, you are very talented. You have to be on the island. You have to move. So I have a cousin that stays on the island that you're supposed to stay with like 
and I didn't I didn't know him. I knew my bigger cousin, but I didn't know his younger brother. So when I moved to the island to stay with him, in that space, I was having a lot of job and I was making money. So I felt he was intimidated by maybe my success and all. He now asked me to move. So I was begging him that, please, just give me like two months. Let me just hmm. find myself. He said, no, that his three bedroom was occupied and he was staying with just him and the wife and a little baby. So three bedroom was filled. So I was begging my friends. Then I had to, then I was shooting a movie I wrote for Uchobodo. I had to be begging. Like I was going on set. The, the uh, crew would just be sleeping in a hotel. I just squeeze up with them. Just to just to, just to, move, just yeah, to, just to have a place to sleep that day. Yeah. And when they finish, the next one will just we just come out and looking all fresh and be thinking the next the night around 10 p.m. you go back and squeeze yourself. It was wow. really sad. And and so when did you kind of go like, okay, enough is enough. Let me figure something out. Like when did the turning point come in? The the thing is that I I I wanted to rent, like I had the money to rent, but it wasn't complete. But what I needed was, you know. Lagos is even if you have one million and the place you want to stay, you can't afford it. You have to wait. So the turning point came at, at um, let's say, when I started managing Rewari Picking because then she came out from nothing. So immediately she blew. Like my my <laughs> my pain actually went away because I was making money. She was making money. Then oh, that was 2018. She was making money. I was making money. But then when she left, I had to focus on both Niger. Mm. And both Niger was the big break because 20, 2020 was a crazy year. But July, everything just hit. And we started making money. Okay. Let's do a little bit of maths on, on, on this thing because I'm quite, I'm quite interested. So like... You you come in as an intermediary and then you you have an owner of the boat and he goes yeah. to him and you go, look, okay. your boats are being dormant, you're not being used that yeah. much. Yeah. Let's put it on our platform and then we'll get people renting it out. Yeah. Do you find them the captain or does he have, already have uh, a captain? The the thing is that um I'm trying to like I tried to manage my own boats. I saw the crisis because you can't manage human beings. Sometimes you 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 the most difficult people to manage are your like captains because sometimes I don't know maybe they have this water spirit that affects them and most times you tell this captain like imagine a captain is taking your passengers to the beach and maybe for finishing the boat instead of the captain to call you and say there's no boss you're trying no to fuel. sort it out today either he's trying to sort it out or just he would just sit back and be pressing his phone and just and the, the, the clients will be panicking. And he will not even calm them down. Please have, let me call my boss. You know, there's so many things that, so we don't get them. What we do is that we try to manage with what they have. Mm. Do you understand? Because at the end of the day, like when they have a manager, we try to educate him on how to treat our customers. You get, we like, we make sure that, like in, in Lekki now, most of our customers, they treat them as their family because on a normal day, if you go to if you go to Lekki to book a boat, they first of all weigh your 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 look. They want to know if this guy is a rich guy so that they will treat you well. So yeah. if you go if if anybody goes to Lekki to book a boat, yes, yeah. they just see you because most guys in Lekki, you know, the rich guys in Lekki don't dress well, so they just come with slippers and just walk in. So when you you are telling them about a boat, they just look at you like, who is this guy? But when they see your car that you bring, they will mm. be like, bros, well done, or oh, yeah, come, come, come. So that, that was what we changed in the boat business. You get, we, we didn't care, like when Shalewa booked, mm. I didn't know she was not based in Nigeria, but I just treated her the same way we would treat. So what we do is we get customers for the boat owners. You understand? And make sure that they treat them just the way we would treat them. Mm. You get, so... Most of them don't really have. Most of them don't really have the the idea of the boat. Like when you're trying to get a boat, we tell you, okay, this is the type of boat you need to get. Because if you get the wrong boat, there's a problem in the wow. market. So we just what we do is just we educate them, help them to get customers, and we make our money. Interesting. Shaleba, what, what, what are you thinking about? What's the question?
Okay. Um, the, the, the something I know about business is that every space is disruptive. People are coming to take your market. You get so COVID made me realize that I had to think beyond just one service. You get we were we, we didn't make money for like let's say six months during the COVID. Then people that were doing short let were making a lot of money. You understand? Some guys were trapped for two months or three months. And imagine so that I think there was an idea that hits me that. What if I had started apartment in during that COVID? Imagine even if I'm making five thousand per day for three months. That's a huge money. So that's when we had to diversify into a lot of things because during the rainy season, boats doesn't peak. The best time for boat business is September, October, November. Those are like the time that I just got back. People just come back. You understand? Those are the big period where you make money. So what we, we, we did was money. the money we made from boats, we invested into other sectors. I try, we tried to do private jets, but the, hmm. the industry... It's yeah, quite tough, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, where it yeah. was, it's, it, you know... The, most of the things are classified, like, if not people like David do, if you fly somebody, like, two of my clients that flew from Asaba to Lagos, they were DSS officials. Mm. You can't make a video for them. Mm. And in my, in my line of business, if you don't have something to show that you have done this, nobody... You get it. Entertainment business is a show of business. You get so if people don't know that you do this service, and what proves that you do the service is the show of that you do. Mm. So you get so that's why I had to slow down on that space. So when I make money, I save and invest. Like in the big run, my my goal is to go into real estate development and all. You get so I've been able to acquire a lot of properties like um, lands and mm. you get yes for the saving is very important because there are a lot of my friends that made money in COVID today they are broke because they believe that the more the the more they make the money it's going to be every day every yeah, day is not party is keep you understand <laughs> every day is not party I know how much we made in COVID this. This um, 2021 was a good year, but 2022 was 2022 was so surprising that I bought I bought two boats, three boats in 2021. I just we just got into 2022. The market for small boats crashed. No way. You understand? It crashed. Boats that we spent over 14 million each, we started selling them for five to six million. Oh, wow. So that's understand? a huge kind of almost you, half the price. You understand? Gone. Yeah. So it's, it, it happened like Bitcoin. It was it just we just, just woke up and, it was gone. and you have to in business you have to be very sensitive. You understand? Mm-hmm. You have to know when to shift. To shift very when, quickly. Yeah. You understand? Quickly, yes, yeah. uh, because in Lagos there are lot of people who have the money to to go into a particular space that mm. they hear this. In COVID, people were saying there's money in this boat business. Do you know that 2022 everybody started buying boats? Even people that don't even know anything about, about the, up tourism, <laughs> about hospitality, yeah. you get. So what what I do, what I've been able to do is to invest into other things. And mm. most times when people see me, they be like, I'm a very, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm a very smart investor when it comes because I, I even if I, I don't want to invest, my mom is al- always on my neck. You have to buy this. You have to buy. This. Sometimes you tell me. Um, when when I look at how she pressures me, I I think she's pushing me too much. But when I look at what I've been able to achieve, like two three years, I think I'm proud of myself. So if both business crash today, people will be be like, oh, "Guy, this guy is gonna go broke, but I'm gonna come back bigger." Mm, you understand? I'm so better, that's yeah. that is me. Shaleba, what, what what question? What are you thinking about?
Yeah, uh, first of all, I think our waterways is not um is not clean enough. You get um in twenty twenty one I took a trip to Maldives and I saw how clean their water was. Mm. And it, like in Nigeria, you can't use an inboard uh, engine boat because of the water. Because those deaths in the water, if they enter your boat, they can crash it. Mm. That's why most times, that's why boat is very expensive to run in, in Lagos. You get, if you can make 10 million from your boat this month and the next month you're spending 20 million to fix to it. To fix it, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you understand? I, I, so, I, I, so the reason why tourism is not um, growing in Nigeria is because the government is not paying attention to the waterways. And also the policies... I know a lot of people who who spend so much money to import boats, just like they buy lottery cars. Mm. And when they come here, they seize them at the at the at customs. The you understand? Yeah. When they seize your boat, and they tell you, there was a time they were telling you, maybe you spent hundred million to buy it, but they tell you to come and claim for fifty million. Mm. You understand? So um, there, our past president made tourism a never go area because. He saw it as a luxury goods or something. So people were scared to invest. And also in Nigeria, if you invest so much in an industry or you buy a private jet, that's why most people are scared to go buy private jet and bring it because mm. that it opens you to a lot of scrutiny. People want to, how did you make your money? Where are you getting this money from? So what people do now is they pass through a bank to finance tourism. Mm. You understand? So if you want to build a beach house, you even if you have the money, you go and you, you borrow from the bank. Borrow from the bank. So the government is not making enough uh, policies to make the waterways. We believe that in the next, let's say, five years, Nigeria is going to be as big as the, the tourism is going to be as big as those um, Rwanda, those um, Zanzibar. Mm. Or, but the problem is that also Nigerians don't really know how lucrative those businesses. In 2020, in 2020, in less than six months, we generated over 200 million from mm. just renting boats and beach house for people, for our customers. Imagine if we had investors to take over the waterways. Do you know that my business is big enough to earn close to like 5 billion every quarter? From just renting. Just renting out the boats. Yeah. I'm telling you, not just ownership, you understand? So people are not seeing, you know, we're looking at oil, crude oil, we're looking at this. Mm. There's this beach house, Sensilo. Sensilo was built about 85 million. But Sensilo in 2020, Sensilo made over 250 million in, in one, one year. year. So the payback was this in months. Do you of understand months. it? Yeah, yeah. Sensilo was like the bedrock of every beach house in, in Lagos, but mm. then. The secret of their success is that they knew about hospitality. They knew about marketing. They knew about management. They knew about everything. You know, what is a lot of people are not educated in the aspect of tourism, mm. how to run a business. Sensible will make a million today. The next, every day they are repainting. Every day they are bringing new ideas into the beach house. Tell me why people will get tired of that place. Mm. You understand? A lot of people are pushing money into places that they are not educated, they are not qualified to be in. You understand? So even if the government makes policies right for people, we are still going to be stuck. In the same... You understand? Yeah, because, yeah. You, because Nigerians, when they see that there's money in this place, they can... A business that, that is not making you money, you can come and put one billion there and they crash it. And maybe you're, you're, you're earning, like say, you're selling maybe this phone for like mm. 100K. They can come and start selling for 30K. They are not interested in making money. They just want to launder money there just to oh, hide okay. it away. Just to hide you it. understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that is what is killing. So I think we need proper education about mm. hospitality. Mm. You get Hotel Continental is like my best place to be. Because when you go there, you forget about your problems. Mm. Do you understand? If you can be as good in hospitality like Hotel Continental, trust me, you're going to kill the... You're going to make money. There's so much money to be made. In hospitality. I'm Nigeria, telling you, yeah. there's so much money. But we are not... I think we should go to... Most times, you see somebody wants to be um, maybe the president of Nigeria, maybe run for a, a, any political office. Mm. They go and study 
um, um, maybe political strategies and all. I wish Nigerians can do that in yeah, tourism. So, I mean, there's something that I, I kind of notice a lot in the, in the, in the hospitality and tourism sector. It's like yeah. when a new place opens, it's quite nice. Yeah. And then I think in about six months to a year, yeah. it's completely <laughs> run down. Yeah. Right? So yeah. kind of the sustainability of those businesses doesn't keep up. Why do you think, I mean, everyone keeps saying the, the cliche stuff, bad management, which is true, but like, yeah. let's unpack that a little bit more. Like, why do you feel like those things are not the same quality after a long period of time? I, or I, short period of time, really. I, I used to think that the whites, like the expatriates, are better with management until I, I saw um, Sensilo. Sensilo is being run by, the owner is a Nigerian, the manager is a Nigerian. So I realized that the, the, the owner of the business has to be informed in that space before. Because there are some things you are telling, if you are not in the hospitality business, there are some things I'm telling you as a manager that, Oga, we need to buy, um, we need to buy water gone for these boys that are coming for do party. We need to buy a spray machine. We need to buy foam machine. Mm. We'll just be thinking, what, what is this guy? What are you doing that for? You understand? Yeah. What are you doing that for? Get some people in, um, some people have beach house and when you tell them that there, there's, there's no internet, they tell you what do you need you internet for? for. <laughs> you get that's why most times I tell Nigerians to travel more. Okay, mm. travel more. If you if you want to do a transportation business, travel more. You see the likes of the um, Ali Kudangote. You see this, this men every day they are exploring uh, new ideas because they are exposed to other cultures. Mm. They see things. You understand? So it's all boils down to the owner and the leadership of that business. You get because you have to know. See, you need to give people new ideas, new activities to stay back to your business. You get if you if the place it may be like I I there's this um, beach house called um, it used to be Lemon Seven. Now, have you heard of Lighthouse? I heard a lot of yeah. Good. So the the girl that owns Lighthouse, just a young girl that has traveled a lot. Mm. She used to do Lighthouse and Takwa Bay. Then there was this beach house that was dead. They built it like a, a hotel room in Elache. Every time I go there, I, was, I used to tell them that this thing is supposed to be the best because you guys have 14 rooms. Mm. Imagine 14 rooms and you run it like a hotel so, with food, everything. Mm. Then the girl just came out one day and took the place on lease and turned the name. I stayed, I just left the place last weekend. I stayed there for three nights. And me, I think I'm very hard to please. Because I've seen a lot of things. So if your service is not top notch, mm. I can't I can't even give you like a, a one star. So if you see what happened in that beach house, you know that it's about management, exposure. Exposure. And you understand? Like you understand? Yeah. If you don't know enough, you can't run a, a hospitality can't. business. Oh, wow. Exposure is very important. Shalewa, go ahead. Okay, um, we're, we're actually in talks with a couple of um, companies to have like a boat where you can buy a boat, a depot where you can buy a boat, mm. not just wait until. Well, so also we are, we, we need all those foreign engineers where you can come because Nigerians don't really have enough um, expertise in the area of engineering. Most times you get, because imagine if you have a place, let's say, um, Range Rover mechanic where you can a service center. Nigerians don't care if it's going to cost 50000 for just inspection. Just name it according to what I have. Mm. You get, imagine um, iPhone has a, a store in Lekki and yeah, the, for just servicing, you understand, yeah. just servicing. You don't care. Nigerians just, we, I think we want, we have gone to that point where we want 
specialty in, in a particular space. Yes. You get yeah. the the reason why we are thriving in business is because when we started, we wanted we named our boat uh, company Boat Niger. You understand? It's easy. Nigerians want our own. You get. Mm. I'm coming to do something. I'm going to get a boat. I'm going to Boat Niger. I'm coming to buy a boat. I'm going to buy from Boat Niger because they want responsibility. If anything happened to my boat, who do I hold? Mm. I need a company that it is specialize in this particular thing so you get so most of those um crises we're having is most people have jet skis packed in lekki and they have not been able to see a, a good engineer to fix them mm. you understand so imagine um a friend of mine bought jet ski for 25 million and he's scared to put that jet ski on water because if anything happens to him he has to fly it back <laughs> you That's understand, saying, you yeah. understand? So, well, and because as well other, you other kind of there are a lot of yeah. there are a lot of things that are actually that we Nigerians are not because if you if you believe in this business you should invest into the engineering aspect infrastructure yeah. and all because if you get it wrong even if you you can buy 100 boats and put on water if you don't have the right maintenance it's going to send you back to like two. Mm. And you'll be thinking, the thing is that you'll be thinking it's your village people. <laughs> but you it's you, but it's you it's because, yourself, because yeah. before you buy up to 100 boats, you should invest so much in, you should in, bring white people like all those expatriates that mm. are good. You know, the, the you have people that are specialized in engine, boat mm. engines. And when you see them, you you know that this, they don't even need to, to break the boat. They just know that this is this. There, there was a time I wanted to sell a boat for a friend. Uh, Yamaha sent some of the, their, their team. And they came, they just used their, the, their machine to test it. And they saw this is where the pump is. This is, this is. Mm. And they, they fixed it. You understand? If we can invest more into that aspect, a lot of people will believe in the boat business. The boat business, yeah. No, yeah. I, I agree even, with you, Even yeah. Uber, Uber tried to do... The boats, Uber boats, yeah. Yes, I heard, and, I heard about it. And it they packed work. up. They packed up. You understand? Because <laughs> there are so many things involved in the business that if you don't yeah. know, you get you can't lead the boats business from the top. You have to lead it from the bottom. The bottom yeah. You understand? You have to be involved the in the. You, you yeah. understand? You have to take the boats that you rent out to your customers. Mm. You know, so that you know. Because when people are complaining that this boat is having a smoking engine, you need to know. You understand? Mm. So that's, that's interesting. Cool. We've got we've got a couple of uh, uh, trivia questions. I think we're going to get to trivia. So yeah, basically, so. don't be scared. It's just to uh, <laughs> okay. see how much you know about your industry. Okay. So uh, let me let me get them up here. Uh, apparently, have we have we ever got anybody any guests that had all the answers correct? I don't think we have. So <laughs> no. if you can beat that that one today, that gift? would be. Is that, that a gift? Good. Is that a gift? Okay. Like, the, um, like Shalewa will put a gift together, don't worry. Like, she has a like, lot of uh, like, ideas. <laughs> like, like a car. Like a car, or, 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 new, or one of those electric boats. I, I, I want one of those you. electric boats, by the yeah, way. I'll sure. talk to you about, about that soon. Okay, yeah. so here, here we're going to trivia questions, right? Okay. So, which, um, what is the front part of a boat called? So just to know the front part there. What is it called? Uh, okay, uh, that's a car. The front part of a boat. Boat Ninja does not know the front <laughs> part. <laughs> part of deck. Oh, boat. deck. That should be a deck. That's actually wrong. It's called a bow. Bow. B-O-W. Bow. B-O-W. Yeah. Wow. That's it. All right. Second question. No, you got, no, there, there, there's four more. You can still redeem yourself. What is the name of the steering device used to control the boat's direction? The steering device. So it's in the water and it's in the back and it goes like this. So it's uh, very, uh, most of the engines actually have it as part of it. So you should be able to get okay. out. That's the two clues I'll give you. <laughs> already, you know? I saw you struggling. I just said, let me just give you some clues. <laughs> okay. Um, that's the one clue. I'm um, under the engine, right? The... The one I'm, not going to, yeah, I'm not going to give you the answer. <laughs> Is it the... <laughs> <laughs> God, that's serious. Okay. Do you forfeit? You, you yeah, couldn't get it? Okay. It's called a rudder. Rudder. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Two, three more questions. What yeah. type of boat is known for its flat bottom and it's often used in shallow water? So it's like flat bottom. Okay. The, that's a kayaki. No. What is that? I'll give you another one. I'll give you another try. So it's a very common boat in Nigeria. 
It's it's very okay. large surface area. Large surface area. Wait, wait, I want to get a question now. Is it yeah. actually a boat? It's not a boat, but anyway, but Isn't, go ahead. Is it a um, private, like personal boat you can paddle or what? No, you can't. It's not a personal boat you can paddle. Okay. It's large. Um, they're mostly like square. Okay, okay. That's uh, the top boat. Top boat? No, that's not correct. It's called a badge. Badge? Yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, that's barge, that's barge. the one they have in um, uh, CMS. Those, um, yeah, so I think they used to carry most of yeah, the okay. uh, petroleum products yes, as well. Yes, yeah. Okay. Okay, two more questions. <laughs> so far, you're doing terribly, terribly <laughs> I, bad. I'm telling you. What is the yeah. term for a small boat carried abroad as a ship? So, you know those tiny boats that they inflate and then, then they carry it, like most people, immigrants use it to cross Africa to other countries. Okay, that's, that's a, our career. That's a, balloon, <laughs> that's a balloon boat. You call it balloon boat? What's yeah. the actual term? Uh, bal- it's called, um, we call it balloon boat. There's something. Do you forfeit or do you want to <laughs> give, give a guess? Because so far, so far, all four <laughs> I, questions. I, think, is, yeah. I don't think I'm going to get the last question, but I, I'll try. Okay. Okay. So the, the answer for yeah. that is dingy. So they call it dingy. I used it. Uh, yeah, it's called dingy boat. Uh, okay, last one. This one should be relatively <laughs> easy, right? Depending <laughs> if you watch movies. What is the name of the famous luxury sh- cruise ship that sank uh, in the Median Ma- uh, Voyage Maidia. in 1912? 1912 um, <laughs> Titanic. And correct. So you got one. <laughs> it's the Titanic, yeah. So... Out of five, you got one, yeah. one oh correct this God, time. That's, that's. And just before we let you off, but we'll ask you a key question. But if you were the president of Nigeria, considering your industry, and then tell about some questions going forward after. Okay. What would you do differently? I think uh, I I will channel most of the resources to the tourism industry because um, a lot of Zanzibar and the rest of the island countries, they don't depend on oil. They depend on tourism and hospitality. Mm. Interesting. So you think all the funding, all the funding, you comment for the yes. tourism? Be, be, yes, because we, the what we make in petrol that we are not, are not able to account for, mm. we can actually make it from tourism. I will come back to challenge you on that one, but let me get Shalewa's question. Shalewa, what are you thinking about? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so before I got into business as a manager, I realized that I realized that a lot of people are not intentional about their brand. They are scared to go into the space. And also when you go into the space, you're believing that there are people who are meant to be successful. Others are meant to follow. Do you understand? So I wrote a book called Compete or Dominate. Big, when I got into the boat business, I wanted to be number one. I wanted to be like the key player. So every decision, every relationship I was building was strategies to get me there. It's like you wanted to be the president of Nigeria. You're not building relationship with the low guys. You want to, the, the cabinet members, you want people, you are trying to. Be, so compete or dominate is like a choice to me. I, say, I made a decision to be number one. So. Mm. My boat is talking that it's trying to make people realize that you are actually born to be a champion. So the only thing why you are not doing what you are meant to be is because you are scared of what your friends will say. Mm. You get uh, my my neighbor back then was telling me, Danny, you are too ambitious. And I'm like, <laughs> the worst you have to be. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm like, do you know that this is yeah. a good thing because good without thing, ambition, yeah. without ambition, I'm not going anywhere. Mm. So when she's when she sees me now, she's like, Daniel, I knew you were gonna be successful. I said, Yes, because you have to see the thing is that a lot of people are shying away from what you really want. Mm. It's like you say you you want to date this girl, and they ask you, Do you like this girl? I, say, I don't know. I yeah, you're know. not sure. You're not, you understand. Yeah, you know, away, see, yeah. g- ladies love guys who are very who know what they want. Mm. So my book is talking about you deciding who you want to be. You understand? Um, imagine the football space is it, is led by just three people: Cristiano Ronaldo, Messi, and the rest. Mm. The music space in Nigeria is led by just three people: Bonaboy. Um, David Doe and Whiskey, mm. the rest. 
Do you understand how it is? The rest are just comfortable with being. They are, like, yeah. I'm you, just, you, want to be you understand? Mm. But people want to, David, though, when he came out, he wanted to be a star. Mm. You understand? He was particular about what he wanted. You understand? Whiskey wanted to be a star. Bonaboy, Bonaboy was somebody they talked into being a star. He didn't know who he was. But when he discovered who he was, mm, he it blew went, up. Went, went Do you understand? Yeah. So I, I re- when I uh, when I managed a couple of people, mm. some of them were like, I beg. Like when you're pushing them, they're angry because they... Yeah, but some people is not in them. You can't force everybody to yes, be a star. Yes, that, that's why time, most so. times, that's why they, they said you have to lead people who are ready to... To be led, yeah. So the, and, 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 yeah another, another saying is that when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. You understand? Kind of thing, yeah. You understand? So, so that's what my book is talking about. I'm, I'm. It was launched in um, May 27th, and a lot of copies have been sold, and I'm happy of the, the acceptance and all. Mm. And and kind of like where people where where can people find your book? Okay, um, you can get it at Sea Lagos Restaurant. You can get at Pataba Busto. And also my website, www.thetribeman.com. And also anywhere you can... What was, what was the name of the book? Compete or Dominate. Compete or Dominate, yes. yeah. So do you, do you feel like in your, your industry right now, you're dominating? Ye, not really, but that's my ambition. Okay, that's you good. Get. Why I would say I'm not dominating? Because I want to be the only guy in Lagos or outside Nigeria that people can book boat from. Mm. And for you to do that, you have to own a lot of boats and everybody else goes back to their house mm-hmm. so that's the ambition so, no, but you, and the, the model gives you the flexibility yeah, yeah to the more so. yes but i think we have not gotten to we're still nigeria we have not gotten to that point where um it's only mikano that is actually a boat build they want to go into boat building yeah. so so we're talking to a lot of people so we'll get to that point have you just before you you come off uh, i am a very huge fan of electrification and electrifying most okay. things right yeah so I've been doing a lot of research, or no, I didn't even do a lot of research, but yeah. um, I especially most of the time focus on, on electricity. That's my industry. Yeah. And I, f- I found an electric boat that I, f- I was like, oh my God, this is so beautiful. It was like a land yacht. Yeah. So it was all yeah, purely yeah. electric. You yeah. could charge it yeah. and then drive the boat. Yeah. What, what Have you kind of seen a couple of those in Nigeria? Like, oh, have that been in your fall? What is the kind of reason why we haven't seen much of those uh, lately? I think Nigeria is always a late comma in anything. Mm. We we wait for people to embrace it because the the problem we have is that we're waiting for people to put their money and fail and then you not come, come and, and say, take, yeah. you understand? We're trying to go into a space that's already figured out. When I got into both business, there was no... There was no blueprint. There was nothing. Nobody has done it in mm. Nigeria. So I was mostly figuring out myself, making mistakes and coming up. So the it will come. You understand? It will come uh, only when the cars have been accepted because you electricity is a problem. Mm. Now you have to power, you have to charge those things and it will cost money to buy mm. petrol to charge those things. You understand? So it will come. Okay. Interesting. No. I, I've learned a lot about kind of I didn't even know much about this boat industry, mm-hmm. but I've learned so much, and Thank hopefully you. listeners as well have learned a lot. Thank you. Um, yeah, how can they kind of uh, reach you, uh, Daniel, as well, like okay. social media? All okay, the kind of stuff? my personal social media is at Tribe Man Global. Then my business is Boat Niger, everywhere. Boat, boat Niger, Niger on social, yes. Twitter, Instagram, yes, everything. Instagram, boat yeah, Niger. Boat yeah. Niger. That's good. No, Daniel, nice to meet you. Really, you. really good chat. Um, hopefully, we would kind of get an I move yes. back. Wait, yeah. should I announce this? I don't think I should announce it, but I think we might do an I move back cruise this December. So <laughs> sure, <laughs> we'll, sure, sure. We'll, we'll hit up both the Japan for that, definitely. Thank, thank, thank you, man. Thanks thank for coming. You. Thank you, Shalewa, for having me on your show. Thank you. Good to see you. I'm still waiting to meet you. I've not met you in person. And... No. <laughs> sure. Are, are, you, are you coming back um, December? Yeah, I'm gonna come back like September. Okay, so okay, that, that's that's good. Thank you for having me on the show. This podcast is sponsored by Go Money. Open a new bank account from your phone in less than three minutes.